Shalom, beloved. A word. I've heard many people talking about the three days of darkness. Many people have warned me what I should do during this three days of darkness. But I want to share a word of encouragement and support with Yasharel and all those who follow the Most High, His Word, and His Holy Spirit. I've not received a warning from the Most High regarding the three days of darkness, but I want to share what I do have with you to give you knowledge and comfort and encouragement during this time. One of the things <clears throat> that I do know is I want to begin in the book of Exodus, chapter 10, verse 21. When we think of the end of times, many of us see that the pattern that the Most High used to bring Yasharel out of Egypt the first time, Egypt being the house of bondage, is the same that he will use the second time. But you have to consider the fact that where we were in the land of Goshen together in the first Egypt, in the second Egypt, in our ex exodus, we are scattered all over the world. So these events would happen worldwide. One of the things I want to refer back to, though, is Exodus 10, verse 20 to 23. And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand towards heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days, but all the children of Yasharel had light in their dwelling. All the children of Yasharel had light in their dwellings. One of the things I also want to reference is when the Most High gave me that vision, two things I noticed were occurring. There were Hebrews amidst the lawless ones committing acts of lawlessness. And there were also Hebrews who beckoned me to come into their homes for refreshment and for rest as I was journeying. And I recognized them just as quickly as they recognized me. It was like going into your family's house. There was no threat, no fear, no hesitation. We knew one another. We were supporting each other. I also believe during this next and final Exodus, beloved, we will recognize one another and support each other as we move out of the land of Egypt, the house of bondage, our captivity, which is all over the world and go back home to the most high to live according to his law, statutes and commands. One of the other things that I remember was it spoke of, and I'm gonna take you to the book of Jasher I was trying to enlarge this, but I couldn't, so forgive me. The book of Jasher, chapter 80, and we're going to read from verses 36 through 40. 36 through 40. The book of Jasher, chapter 80, verses 36 through 40. And the Most High sent darkness upon Egypt that the whole land of Egypt and Pathros became dark for three days so that no man could not see his hand when, when he lifted it to his mouth. 
at that time died many of the people of Israel who had rebelled against the Lord and who would not hearken to Moses and Aaron and believe not in them that God had sent them and who had said, we will not go forth from Egypt lest we perish with hunger in a desolate wilderness and who would not hearken to the voice of Moses. And Yah plagued them in the three days of darkness. They're talking about the Israelites. These are the rebels. I'm at verse 39. We're in the book of Jasher, chapter 80. I started at the 36th verse. This book, I have it singularly. It is also in the Sefer, which I read and checked, and it is the same words. And Yah plagued them in the three days of darkness. And the Israelites buried them in those days without the e e Egyptians knowing of them or rejoicing over them. And the darkness was very great in Egypt for three days. And any person who was standing when the darkness came remained standing in his place. And he that was sitting remained sitting. And he that was lying continued lying in the same state. And he that was walking remained sitting upon the ground in the same spot. And this thing happened to all the Egyptians until the darkness had passed away. Beloved, what it's saying in the book of Jasher is the rebels among the Hebrew the Lord took them, he took their lives. And the Egyptians knew it not because they were trapped in that darkness so thick that it could be felt. And the Israelites buried their own and those were the rebels. But the rest of the Egypt, Israel had light. They had light, beloved, all right? And Yah sent darkness upon Egypt, that the whole land of Egypt and Pathros became dark for three days, so that a man could not see his hand when he lifted it to his mouth. At that time died many of the people of Yasharel who had rebelled against the Lord and who would not hearken to Moses and Aaron and believed not in them that God had sent them and who had said, we will not go forth from Egypt lest we perish with hunger in a desolate wilderness and who would not hearken to the voice of Moses. And the Lord plagued them in the three days of darkness and the Israelites buried them in those days without the Egyptians knowing of them or rejoicing over them. And the darkness was very great in Egypt for three days. And any person who was standing when the darkness came remained standing in his place. And he that was sitting remained sitting. And he that was lying continued lying in the same state and he that was walking remained sitting upon the ground in the same spot. And this thing happened to all the Egyptians until the darkness had passed away. This is the book of Jasher, chapter 80. I'm reading from verses 36 through 40. This is in the book of the Sefer as well as the singular book of Jasher. I'm going to reference once again, the book of Exodus chapter 10 verses 21 through 23. And keep one thing in mind, beloved, these plagues, there came a point where the most high made a distinction between the Egyptians and Yasharel, that the plagues that were upon Egypt there came a point, those plagues had no effect on the Hebrews. 
We are reading in the book of Exodus chapter 10, going from verse 21 through 23. And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another. Neither, neither rose any from his place for three days, but all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. I am not here to refute anyone who has made a prediction about when the three days darkness comes. The Most High speaks to whom he will. He does what he will. And the visions of others may be exact. I am simply sharing this to give comfort to Yasharel. Many are terrified that this darkness is going to come upon them. But that's not what the word of the Most High said. The three days darkness was a plague against the Egyptians. When you translate that into current times, that would be those heathens who held Yasharel captive, who had committed heinous acts against the people of the Most High and dishonored the Most High. In the book of Jasher, we read that the Israelites who rebelled against the Most High and did not believe Moses or Aaron and were resistant to the Exodus, that the Most High took their lives and the Egyptians knew it not because Yasharel buried them during those three days and Yasharel had light. Finally, beloved, we are going to the wisdom of Solomon chapter 17. This describes what the Egyptians were experiencing during those three days of darkness. This is in the Apocrypha. If you want to look it up, it is the wisdom of Solomon chapter 17. For great are thy judgments and cannot be expressed. Therefore, unnurtured souls have erred. That darkness was also based on the fact those Egyptians were under spiritual darkness when they were committing these heinous acts against Yasharel. Verse 2, for when unrighteous men thought to oppress the holy nation, they being shut up in their houses, the prisoners of darkness, and fettered with the bonds of a long night, lay there exiled from the eternal providence. For while they supposed to lie hid in their secret sins, they were scattered under a dark veil of forgetfulness, being horribly astonished and troubled with strange apparitions. It's talking about just like when the lights go out and we're moving in darkness in our home and suddenly everything that was common becomes threatening. The sounds change, the, the shadows become specters to us, particularly children when they're in the dark. This is what was happening to the Egyptians during that three days of darkness, beloved. Verse three, for while they supposed to lie hid in their secret sins, mm, they were scattered under a dark veil of forgetfulness, being horribly astonished and troubled with strange apparitions. For neither might the corner that held them keep them from fear, but noises as of water falling down sounded around them, and sad visions appeared unto them with heavy countenances. 
No power of the fire might give them light. Neither could the bright flames of the stars endure to lighten that horrible night. There was no light that could penetrate that darkness. This darkness, this plague was a punishment to the Egyptians beloved. Verse six, only there appeared unto them a fire kindled of itself, very dreadful. For being much terrified, they thought the things which they saw to be worse than the sight they saw not. For the, as for the illusions of art magic, they were put down. There was no magic they could use to overpower that darkness. And their vaunting in wisdom was reproved with disgrace. Everything they held so high, their, their so-called skill of knowledge was reproved. There was no wisdom that they held. It was all disgrace. For verse eight, for they that promised to drive away terror and troubles from a sick soul, were sick themselves of fear, worthy to be laughed at. Those scientists, those magicians, those soothsayers, those so-called great men of knowledge and skill, okay, they could do nothing because they themselves were sick of fear and worthy to be laughed at. Verse nine, for though no terrible thing did fear them, yet being scared with beasts that passed by and hissing of servants, they died for fear, denying that they saw the air, which could of no side be avoided. Let's go back over there. First of all, the powers that be, we're going to start at verse eight, for they that promised to drive away terrors and troubles from a sick soul were sick themselves of fear, worthy to be laughed at. For though no terrible thing did fear them, yet being scared with beasts that passed by and hissing of servants, serpents, they died of fear. Just the sound of movement in that darkness, the hissing of a serpent, they died for fear denying that they saw the air, which could of no side be avoided. For wickedness condemned her by her own witness is very timorous. Mm. Wickedness, the bully condemned by her own witness is very timorous. And being pressed with conscious, always forecast of grievous things. Mm. Are we now hearing listen I'm going to go to verse 11 we are in the book of wisdom okay the book of wisdom chapter 17 verse 11 for wickedness condemned by her own witness is very timorous fearful cowardly Mm. And being pressed with conscience, knowing what they have done, what they would do, given their same opportunity. Mm. Always forecasted grievous things. They always talk about terrible things. Hmm. Do we hear that now? Broadcast of grievous things? Mm. For fear is nothing else but a betraying of the succors which reason offers. And the expectation from within being less counted the ignorance more than the cause which bringeth the torment. Their expectation was something horrible. This expectation from within, it was less then the ignorance, the, the, it counted the ignorance more than the cause which bringeth the torment because they lacked knowledge of what was going on. 
it brought more torment to them. Verse 14, but they sleeping the same sleep that night, those that went to sleep that night, which was indeed intolerable that night, and which came upon them out of the bottoms of inevitable hell. The Most High was giving them all a common dream, those who slept. Mm. Verse 15, were partly vexed with monstrous apparitions and partly fainted, their heart failing them for a sudden fear and not looked for came upon them. They are all dreaming those who were trapped in that three days dark. When they slept, that's what this is saying. They all dreamed a common dream of greater terror. Their sleep could not give them relief from the darkness that they were experiencing. Verse 16, so then whosoever there fell down was straightly kept shut up in a prison without iron balls. Mm, mm, mm. Many people think of it. This darkness so thick it could be felt. Just as they had imprisoned Yasharet, mm, they too were imprisoned by that thick darkness that could be felt. So then whosoever there fell down was straightly kept, shut up in a prison without iron bars. For whether he was a husbandman or shepherd or laborer in the field, he was overtaken and endured that necessity, which could not be avoided. For they were all bound with one chain of darkness. Mm. Whether it were a whistling wind, or melodious noise of birds among the spreading branches, or pleasing fall of water running violently, or a terrible sound of stones cast down, or running that could not be seen of skipping beasts, or a roaring voice of most savage wild beasts, or rebounding echo from the hollow mountains, these things, made them swoon with fear. Remember they're trapped in the darkness and everything around them is threatening. For the whole world shined with clear light and none were hindered in their labor. Over them only was spread and heavy night. Listen to what he's saying. An image of that darkness which should afterwards receive them. Yes, beloved. But yet were they unto themselves more grievous than the darkness. Their own fear was greater than the darkness. Many of them died from fright. The imagining, hearing the sounds that were amplified with their imaginations of fear. And when we go back, beloved, Forgive me. When we go back, trying to find, yes. Verse 14, we are in the book of wisdom. I'm going up to show you chapter 17, wisdom of Solomon. This is in the Apocrypha, beloved. The wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14. I'm going to verse, I'm sorry. The Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 17, I'm going to verse 14. This is the three days darkness and what the Egyptians were experiencing. In verse 14, those that could sleep dreamed a common dream. Thinking many of us when we're sick, many of us when we are in a state of upset, sleep is a lot of times it brings comfort and rest and ease to our bodies, to our minds. But in the darkness, there was no escaping this plague. 
but they sleep in the same sleep that night, which was indeed intolerable and which came upon them out of the bottoms of inevitable hell, were partly vexed with monstrous apparitions and partly fainted, their heart failing them for a sudden fear and not looked for came upon them. So then whosoever there fell down was straightly kept, shut up in a prison with, without iron balls. And now I'm going to go to the bottom. When we look at verse 20, before we finalize, we are in the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 17, and we are finishing with verse 20 and 21. For the whole world shined with clear light, and none were hindered in their labors. When is this happening when the whole world shined with clear light? It was during the three days of darkness that plagued the Egyptians, beloved and none were hindered in their labor. Now it speaks of the Egyptian in verse 21, over them only was spread in heavy night, an image of that darkness which should afterward receive them. But yet were they unto themselves more grievous than the darkness. Their fear finished that plague. Many of them in their terror died from it. When we look at the book of Jasher, verse 36, this same said book of Jasher is unto itself a book. It is also found in the Apocrypha, or not the Apocrypha, forgive me, in the Sefer. And Yah sent darkness upon Egypt that the whole land of Egypt and Pathros became dark for three days so that a man could not see his hand when he lifted it to his mouth. At that time died many of the people of Yasharel who had rebelled against the Lord. They were not in the darkness. The Most High took their lives. Why? Because they rebelled against the Lord. And who would not hearken to Moses and Aaron and believe not in them that Yah had sent them? And who had said, we will not go forth from Egypt lest we perish with hunger in a desolate wilderness. And who would not hearken to the voice of Moses? They weren't dealing with three days darkness. They were in rebellion. And the darkness was very great in Egypt for three days. And any person who was standing when the darkness came remained standing in his place. And he that was sitting remained sitting. And he that was lying continued lying in the same state. And he that was walking remained sitting upon the ground in the same spot. And this thing happened to all the Egyptians until the darkness had passed away. To finish, beloved, we are going to the book of Exodus, chapter 10, verses 21 through 23. And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another. Neither rose any from his place for three days. But all the children of Yasharel had light in their dwellings. Beloved, I am not refuting the fact that there will come three days darkness. What I am doing is giving comfort to Yasharel that this plague was sent to the Egyptians, to those who held Yasharel in bondage and cruelty. 
We do know, according to the book of Jasher, that he took the lives of the Israelites who were in rebellion, but they were not in the darkness. He simply took their lives during the three days of darkness because they rebelled against the Most High. They would not heed the words of Moses and Aaron, and they resisted the Exodus. And Yasharel buried them. And the Egyptians knew it not because they were still under the three days of darkness. Again, this is not to refute any visions that others have given. This is simply a word of comfort, beloved. Even in the vision that I had, the evil never touched me. I was witnessing it and Yasharel was supporting me and I was among them when they gave me rest. We recognized one another. It's a word, beloved, an encouraging word that you may know that the most high is among us Will that three days darkness come? I believe it will, beloved. But will it hurt his beloved children? No. According to scripture, that plague is against our enemies. And if any one of Israelites is harmed, it will be directly by the most high where he takes them out because they rebel against him and against his word as it spoke in the book of Jasher. But they were not in those three days of darkness. That darkness was a plague for the Egyptians and their cruelty against Yasharel and because they did not want to let them go. It was one of the, it was the ninth plague the final plague being the death of their firstborn. This came to me, I do not have fear. I know the Most High is with us. If the darkness was outside, I would not go out into it, beloved. But as it's stated in the book of Exodus, chapter 10, verses 21 through 23, Yasharel had light in their dwellings and there was no evil coming against them. A word, beloved, be encouraged. 